Hey, what's up, everybody? Marcos Viegas for Fight Up TV, powered by State Trump VIP, being joined with my man, Antonio Tarver. Antonio! What's up, Marco? What's going on, bro? Uh, like we mentioned, big fight over the weekend. A lot of people talking about it. A lot of people angry about it. Devin Haney beats Vasily Lomachenko uh, via majority decision. He got the nod unanimous, on the Unanimous decision. It yeah. was a unanimous decision. Unanimous, excuse me, unanimous. Hey, man, it, it was a close fight. I was there live, but a lot of people are crying robbery. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Give me give me your thoughts. I totally disagree. You know, it was a close fight, but a guy coming in, uh, undisputed champion, I mean, you got to take the title. And, I mean, Lomachenko fought well. Uh, he fought in spurts, though. You know, I think Devin Haney got out in front a little bit, even though I did give Lomo the second round. After that, you know, Devin Haney pretty much controlled it. But looking back at it, I know Lomo can say to himself, that was a great opportunity to do something great. When I look back at that fight, I think if Lomo had the gas to really push, there was moments where I thought he should have pushed it on his experience alone. You know, um, I thought he should have had more successful moments in that fight. Um the body shots that Devin Haney was landing early, I thought really affected Lomo's game plan. Uh, he didn't stay in the pocket, and I was surprised at that. I watched the fight twice because I had to. I was wondering, did I miss something? You know what I mean? But when I went back, uh, I gave Lomo the seventh and eighth, of course, the 10 and 11. That's, that's five rounds right there. And I watched it again, and I, I didn't have any different outcome. You, you know, Haney closed the show. He won that last round. And I was thinking Lomo probably should have uh, stayed in the pocket a little bit more because he said before the fight, Haney wasn't a puncher. Well, if Haney wasn't a puncher, then you have to exchange with a guy that you feel you have more power than. And I think that's what he didn't, uh, he didn't capitalize. I thought he should have took more risk to try to get him out of there. I mean, why are you going to the decision anyway when you know a guy is an undisputed champion? You got to be thinking in the back of your mind, hey, I mean, I got to do a little bit more than just compete. You got to win. And I'm like, how can you take the man belts on a performance like that when he competed and he defended? See, you're challenging. When you're challenging for the belt, that's a different, you, 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 you're fighting from a different perspective. When you're when you're defending, and I think when you look at that fight, the whole totality of the fight, Devin Haney defended. He never gave in. He fought back every time Lomo came and pressed. He was there. But truth be told, watching that fight from my vision, you know, Haney got a lot of work to do. Haney got an extremely lot of work to do, bro. He's carrying that undisputed title. I didn't personally see undisputed talent. Mm -hmm. And that's just being... Wow. I didn't see undisputed talent. Why? What was there? What, what stuck out? Why don't you see undisputed talent? Bruh, like I said, I, I see the game differently. I have a different scope. I have a different lens. You feel me? And so when I look at that, I understand why Haney is, is not a, a puncher. Because he doesn't punch properly. You know, and I'm not trying to, you know, rain on nobody parade, but, tr you know, truth be told, man, these young guys aren't getting the lessons, bro. There's, there's no teachers in the game of boxing, and it's evident because these guys, I mean, when you look at this skill set, it's a lot of things missing, bro. A lot of things missing when you talk about a complete fighter, and that's the only way I can see it from being a complete fighter that can do everything in the ring. You understand? I don't even see no rhythm. I don't see no timing. I don't see no execution, bro. It's levels to this. And these guys ain't sharp, bro. Like I know they can be sharp. You see what I'm saying? And, and so that's all I'm saying. That's why people right now are looking at Devin like a piece of meat. There's a lot of things missing in that fight. And that, does, that don't say that he didn't win the fight. But, bro, you got to separate yourself. And I didn't see no separation. I don't see a lot of separation nowhere in the game today. You feel me? Everybody catching up, bro. But what I didn't like and what I felt was 
hurtful to me is that I saw so many people that looked like Devin Haney raining on this young man's parade, bro. And this is the hate culture, bro. Sorry to admit it. This is the hate in this culture I ever seen, bro. Nobody won't help nobody. Nobody won't, you feel me, work with nobody. And it's a shame. And that's why we falling behind in the game, bro. Boxing won't even help itself. Mm. Because, you know, they won't even help themselves when they when you talk about elevating the sport, bro. So that's all I'm saying, bro. I got C's in the game and I ain't going nowhere. And there's a, a world of experience that I'm trying to give away that can help these young men, that can truly help these young men become complete fighters, bro. Because say what you will about me, like me or love me, bro. I did it. And the game, and, and the game is to have all of your marbles and all of your senses when you're 23 years in the game and you don't fault all the killers. That's what success is, bro. Being able to get out the game unscathed. It's a killer sport, bro. It's a murderous sport. Yeah, no, I I brought it up that you know, one of the things being overshadowed here is for a kid so young, Devin is really rising to the occasion in terms of challenges. And, you know, I, I felt bad because I, I was trying to, like, look at the situa situation for what it is. And I'm like, man, like, this kid's only 24. And look what he's done in the last year. You know, he went to Australia twice when he didn't really have to. The, the second time, he's fighting a guy like Lomachenko, where a lot of people his age, you know, aren't risking their O's in the way that, you know, he's, he's risking it in, in this fight. Granted, he's the undisputed champion. There's a standard uh, where he has to face the elite, uh, regardless of, of the business and all that. But, you know, going back, what are you seeing that the, the public is missing or not seeing? Because being there in the arena, uh, I get the sense that the, the public that was watching the fight felt that Lomachenko won. And a lot of people online saying that Lomachenko won. Okay. There's a 90% there's a Lomo crowd. I mean, that was obvious. You, you know what I mean? It was a 90% Lomo crowd, of course. But when you're the viewing public from home, it's impossible to see the fight clearly when you can't hear it right. When you can't hear and really and, and be uh, have an explanation and a, a description of what's really taking place while it's taking place, it gives you mixed signals. Because you can't call a fight from one fighter's perspective. You just can't do that. And bruh, there was a lot of programming night of the fight. And I, I'm not calling nobody. There's a lot of programming. I heard more low mode than I heard the whole week in the buildup. It, it was just to the point where it was so obvious that, it, you know, it, you didn't even hardly hear Devin Haney name from his perspective of what he was doing and, and how he was defending, how he was you know, fighting off Lomo every time he came in, he got hit with counters. But I would have liked Devin Haney's timing to be a lot better. These are the things that I like to work on, the technical aspect of the game. And when I break that fight down, bro, I see a lot of holes. And that's not, and sometimes you got to accept constructive criticism, you know, from the whole, t you know, but I can't give them the game. See, this is the thing. I, I want to help everybody, but I can't give them the game, bro. But I got the answers. I really do. I got the answers, bro. You know, when I look at styles of fights, bro, you know, I think when you look at my years of experience in the game, from the amateurs to the pros, and how I was able to, you know, solidify myself on every facet of the game, you know, my thing is, bro, I'm here, I'm promoting, I, I, you know, I, I think I'm a source for that information, bro, that these fighters, you know, it's experience, bro. I've been places that they trying to go and the most won't never get there. You know what I'm saying? But that don't mean I'm better than nobody, but I, I do have a different approach. You understand? And so in this, this, this education that I'm trying to give, bro, to these fighters, it's, it's priceless. It's priceless. You managers and promoters out there, if you want the best for your fighters, you got to get them in the hands of someone that, where the handlers at? Back in the throwback era, there were handlers. There's no handlers to really show these fighters how to become a champion, bro. You know, it's not a lot of uh, examples. 
You feel me? You feel me? Like, that's all I'm saying. And when you look at the guys that are considered great trainers today, look at their experience in the game. And that's all you gotta, that's all you gotta look at. Look at their experience in the game. No, it's, it's, it's something that's uh, been said by many people that there's not a lot of teachers in the game anymore um, that, you know, really great trainers were, were lacking just overall um, in, in the sport, you know, a lot of knowledge. More so in our oh. community. More so in our community. You know, Antonio, you know, given that, given like the fallout of the fight, do you want to see a rematch? Do you yes. think rematch I, think it, I think it warrants a rematch. Hmm. I think it warrants the rematch. But if we see the same fight, it's the same result. Somebody got to show some separation. You got to take this man title. You got to take this man title. You can't give you no world. We can't give you the undisputed title on that performance, sir. I'm sorry. That you have to earn. You, you feel me? And you fought your ass off. I'm not taking anything away from you. But you walked in as the challenger. There's no way the belts. <laughs> no can change hands on a fight like that. There was not enough domination. There was no knockdown. There was, you know, it was rounds won and there was rounds lost. And when you add those rounds up, it favored Haney by a little bit, but that's all it have to be a little bit. Why are some people expected to do more than others? I was one of those fighters. I couldn't win a close decision. If I could win a close decision like Devin Haney, I would have one one loss on my record right now today. I had to avenge all my losses because they was political decisions. Yeah, that's the other thing that's being brought up uh, about this fight. Even another thing, feel- Marco, we can go back into the history of yeah. the game mm-hmm. and we can dissect some of these horrible decisions. And when you look at those decisions, who's usually on the end of the bad stick? Who's usually on the end of it? Pernell Whitaker? Who's usually on the end of it? Marvin Hagler? Marvin Mm. Hagler? Antonio Tarver? Who's usually on the end of those bad decisions, bro? Usually the uh, the B-side or the guy that doesn't have, you know, the the machine behind them. Exactly. But but a lot of this has been coming up recently. You know, Teddy Atlas uh, is starting a a petition now for a national commission. Uh, A lot of people up in arms against one of the judges' scorecards in this fight because it added 8-4. For a uh, uh, Devin, uh, two weeks ago we saw the stoppage with you know Roley and and Barroso. The stoppage was horrible. The stoppage was horrible, bro, because yeah. it just didn't make no sense. You mm-hmm. had a guy behind on the scorecards. You had a guy losing the fight. It looked like could have been in question. So you take this man dream like that. That should have been something. It should have been an outcry for that. That fight should have been mandated a rematch because we saw who was winning. Just like that. They change history just like that. But when it's fitting, they want to make an uproar about it. You feel me? When it's fitting. Now, I don't agree with everything boxing. These people always want to put the race card out there Hmm. because that's all they got to go to. They're comfortable in that space. You see what I'm saying? Some zebras don't never change their stripes. Hmm. So how can you see a fight in a clear optic when you're not – doing it subjectively anyway. So I'm saying like, bro, look, you got to have the right type of heart to sit around that ring and be a judge. You got to have the right heart to sit around that ring and be a commentator because you know your words can be misleading and leading. So my thing is just call it straight. I never had a problem doing that, ever. You know what I mean? And and that's the difference, bro. If I commentated my son fight, I'm going to call it straight down the middle. You feel me? If he getting his ass beat, I'm going to commentate that too. You feel me? I ain't got no skin in it, bro. You feel (laughs) what I'm saying? I just want the people to see it clearly. 